What's going on reef builders? I'm Jake Adams. It's out, I'm outside and it's really, really cold. We're doing a very different kind of video today. I thought it'd be really informative to do a tank moving video. So we've got our box truck here and um, here in the back of Evan's car, we've got a lot of preparations. We've got bins, extension cords, pump, clamps. We even have, since it's such a cold day, we got a temperature gun so we can keep an eye on things. Um, suction cups, specimen cups. So we're gonna load up the car, load up the box truck, head downtown, and uh, it's gonna be a very different type of video for us because we're gonna film as we're doing some uh, hardcore aquarium work. Uh, but I think there'll be some interesting tips there for anyone who needs to move a tank or is gonna move a tank in the future. So I hope you enjoy this video because it's gonna be a lot of work for us to move the tank while shooting the video. But thanks for joining us and uh, time to go downtown. Um, all right, so we've arrived here at the uh, home of the owner of this aquarium and I have Parker Lab. Tell us about your company and tell us how long you've been running this tank. Um, I'm, I work for Distinctive Living Reefs. We've been taking care of this tank for since 2007, 2008. Um, we're mainly a maintenance company. We just clean tanks for the most part and uh, that's about it. And uh, what's the volume of this tank? It's got such crazy, awesome dimensions. It is, it's pretty big. It's about 240 gallons total with the sump and everything. And so one of the things that really surprised me is this tank looks like it's two years old, but you've been taking care of it for 15 years. It's yeah. in such good condition. Yeah, we try to keep it as best condition as we can, try to get all the scratches out of everything that we need to. And uh, so, you, so it, it has good. been buffed? Has been buffed recently, not not within the last year, but we used to do it more often. Um, but yeah, it, it, it can be due for a little scratch removal here, but it, so it's pretty good. I haven't moved a tank in a little while, so definitely gonna be leaning on Parker's experience. You've moved two tanks this year? Uh, this month, this, this month. month, and we'll have another one coming up. So yeah, it's kind of what we do is move tanks around when people need it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so just uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my uh, usual uh, approach to moving a tank is first collect some clean water, uh, buckets for the fish, buckets for the corals, right. and then as needed for the rock, um, probably won't keep them submerged, maybe wrap them in a towel in a bin just to keep them from drying out. Whatever you're comfortable with, yeah. And then uh, pitch the water as fast as possible and for get sure. it moved. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to, we'll, we'll probably won't remove the fish until the rocks are gone, just right. to make it a little easier on us. We'll, we'll collect the clean water around. first. Correct, correct, yeah, yeah absolutely. Give, some, give them a, a place for the corals to go, put them in some buckets, we'll move them out of the way, and then yeah, we'll, we'll get it going. But as you can see, I've removed most of the sand already yeah, to make it say, a little easier on us just just a uh, less work for us so. that's the important thing he's been slowly removing the sand it's been almost two months month since, I first, mm -hmm. since i first saw this tank mm -hmm. but it's running vho's is it a magnetite on the return uh it's a blue line one so an no, external pump an external pump blue okay. line like HD 40 or something like that. Okay. Something like that. All okay. right, well, now that we got our intro well and done, um, we're gonna get started on this thing, officially. Let's right. take my the jacket, jacket off and get
Oh man, so we got everything in the box truck. It took about two hours, not bad. Huge thanks to Parker and Danny. You know, they had some tools, we had some tools, and together um, we were able to de deconstruct this 240 gallon acrylic tank that barely fit through the doors um, in just two hours, get it loaded up. So it's right around noon right now. We're leaving downtown, heading back to Golden. Just gonna drive and mosey super slowly all the way there, make sure we don't have any problems. Um, the fish are getting aerated. It's not, the air temperature's cold, but because of the, the sun, you know, it's not like this urgent freezing temperature. So we're just gonna get back to the studio, um, unload everything. We got three hours to take the truck back, so. <laughs> shush, Siri, shush, shush. So yeah, we have a lot of time to unload this truck and the whole rest of the day to kind of like rebuild the tank. Um, service some of the equipment that we're going to reuse and then install new equipment. So, time to head back west and uh, get this tank rebuilt. We are back at the studio. We think we got everything back in one piece. And I don't know how much we communicated this during the teardown of the tank, but just you know, using, using some common sense, we started from the top, worked all the way all the way down. So we took off the canopy, started draining the tank, emptied everything from the tank, then moved the stand. And likewise, here now, we're starting from the bottom and to build it up. I know it seems really common sense, but it's something that you can miss um, in the heat of the moment, what's going on. So we were fortunate enough to also get this platform, which just so happens to have the uh, counter level we need to keep things level here. Um, I'll show you the stand. The stand's outside. Uh, right now we have it soaking with a little bit of fresh water. Uh, so here's the stand. This is the back of the stand right here. We got some water in it. Just, you know, you can imagine how much salt creep builds up over like 15 years and it really wasn't that bad but definitely need a good hose down i'm just gonna basically refurbish this entire aquarium from top to bottom so we got the stand here and then if you come over here follow me through the snow <laughs> this is a sump classic sump you know i think nowadays this would be considered uh, like a 60 to 75 gallon sump, but it's been running on this tank that has a, a small surface area. I think that's why it gets away with it. Um, but we've got a, uh, there was a blue line pump on the return, but we're gonna use an internal pump just to help keep the heat. Um, it's got an ASM skimmer. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that because I know it's gonna be loud and um, kind of inefficient. I know they still work and they're awesome. So we'll find a good home for that. So this is gonna get a full wash down and uh, I'll show you a couple more things inside. The tank still in the moving truck. Kind of on the fence of whether we're gonna start using VHOs. Because if I remember correctly, um, each of these bulbs is 95 watts. So I'm pretty sure four footer is 110, three footer was 95. And that's just uh, an unreasonable amount of power to light up a tank like this. Don't get me wrong, I love my VHOs, but I don't even know if we're gonna use this. So we're gonna slam some lunch clean up some of this equipment and then start building the tank. Go. you guys we got some good news and we got some bad news you know a lot of times when you do a tank move um, hopefully you hope for everything to get taken apart put back together just like it was but unfortunately uh, we, we ran across a very <laughs> big stumbling block as we can say the stand broke um, when we pulled it out it was totally fine it was totally fine. It's just sitting here out in the sun a little bit. 
and then we just after a little while this crack just appeared just showed up um, we didn't hit it we didn't uh, tweak it um, you know the good news is is that it happened before we put the stand on here this is a 15 year old piece of acrylic it's extremely well built but you know the pressures and the tension on acrylic um, you know, over time, that's just gonna build up and create a crack. I'm sure the cold air and the hot sun definitely didn't help our case, but um, the flip side is it didn't happen while we're filling the tank full of water and rock and stuff. And two, um, although it's gonna be a little bit of a hustle, over the next few days, we're gonna have to figure out how to build a stand, which means I get to build exactly the stand I want. One downside about this tank is it has one tiny little door and a little bit of access panels at the back. And uh, you guys know I like just big posts and just all the access. So this nice <laughs> big old piece of junk here, we're not gonna be able to use anymore. So um, thankfully we brought the entire tank to a reef aquarium studio. So we got plenty of water, plenty of filters, plenty of tanks and uh, let me show you what we're going to do. So there's, we don't have anything to put the tank on yet. I really want to keep that grouping of livestock isolated. So uh, we just drained this uh, kind of shuffling tank. This is a tank that we use for receiving livestock. So we can take it off. So we're just going to flip the trough around. <laughs> We've been using it as a stand for this. So all the livestock will be able to go in there. And we're just going to make it work with lights, heaters, some kind of filtration and uh, work on getting a stand made for the tank. So um, we're not gonna be able to complete this build today, but uh, hopefully it still turns out to be one video. Um, so yeah, if you feel for us, make sure to put those down in the comments if you've ever encountered some, some challenges while moving a tank. Um, I'm gonna make some calls, see how quickly we can get a stand made for this tank, because it's a beautiful, beautiful dimension. That's why I fell in love with it. Um, but now we got some livestock to take care of, and uh, we'll see you on the flip.